looking out for our nation. I beg of you, you need to stand against the evil that's plaguing our nation. If you don't like abortion, don't have one. The only thing that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. Like, you kill a baby fetus, the same thing as killing any old inanimate object. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders. To take on the culture of death and win. You, 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 you young people, it's your movement now. It's not your parents anymore. The blood that is shed cries out to God from the ground for justice. And now, here's Mark. Well, by now, you've probably heard about the controversy regarding the Netflix movie Cuties. And we're going to be talking about that today here on the Mark Harrington Show with your radio activist, Mark Harrington. You can check us out by going to markharrington.org. Also, we are uh, streamed live over our Facebook platforms, my, my platforms and Created Equals. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. We're also on terrestrial radio, on Salem radio here in the uh, Columbus area. That's WRFD 880 a.m. And Cincinnati at WCVX 1160 a.m. So we're going to be talking about this Netflix movie called Cuties, which isn't cute, by the way. And we're going to be talking about that as well as the connection between abortion and pornography. You might not uh, have ever heard those being discussed in the same conversation as having similarities, but they do. And in order to do that, I have as my guest today and friend and colleague, my good friend, uh, Jonathan Van Maren. Jonathan, thanks for being on the program. Thanks for having me, Mark. So Jonathan's an author, speaker, activist for the Center for Bio, uh, Center for the Canadian Center for Bioethical Reform. Mm -hmm. By the way, I was part of the Center for Bioethical Reform for ten years in the uh, in the two thousands to two thousand and ten, before I started CBR. So I know Jonathan from those days as well, mm -hmm. and the work that they do in Canada. Uh, Jonathan, you've written a whole lot about this connection between pornography and abortion. I want to get to that, but before mm -hmm. we do. Let's talk about this movie, this Cuties movie. Wow. Uh, I have not seen it. And a lot of people say, well, hey, how can you count? How, how can you comment on it if you've not seen it? Well, I don't plan on looking at child pornography. I mean, I don't do that. <laughs> you know, I've read enough. I've seen enough online and I've read enough from people that I respect to know that this is bad news. What's right. your take on this movie? Well, so I would agree with you 100%. I actually had the misfortune of stumbling across some clips that got posted on Twitter of certain scenes from the film that were making the case, hey, this is the sexualization of children. Uh, there was one minute and 40 second clip. I couldn't even make it 20 seconds in. I just, right. I, I just felt bad even seeing it, to be honest. But at the yep. end of the day, sometimes you don't have to watch something to know it's awful, right? You don't need to dive all the way to the bottom of the sewer to know the same thing right. at the top is at the bottom. This is the sexualization of children. Everybody who sees it knows it. But what, what we're seeing once again is a handful of people who are telling the rest of us not to believe our lying eyes. It's the same thing mm. with drag queen story time. It's the same thing with the kids yep. twerking at pride parades. Uh, we basically point out, hey, this is obviously the sexualization of children. And they say to us, well, obviously you're just too stupid to not realize that what you're seeing is not what you're seeing. So you know this as well as I do. That's been a trend over the last several years. It's incredibly disturbing. Again, my guest is Jonathan Van Maren. You can check out his work at thebridgehead.ca. That's thebridgehead.ca. Uh, Jonathan, Netflix. I don't subscribe to Netflix. Never have. Obviously, I'm mm -hmm. never going to now. And there's been a big push right. to cancel it. Uh, this movie... It, you know, just to, from the uh, producers, supposedly, they are saying, well, listen, this is really to draw out the the um, the evil of uh, child exploitation or sexualization. Uh, right. Does that fly? Well, no, for a couple of reasons. So 
we as pro-life activists are very on board with exposing the injustice right. in order to turn people away from the injustice. We would agree with that. Right. But we would all recognize that fundamentally there are limits. And so in the case of, of Netflix cuties, just from the clips that are on Twitter, just from the actual trailer and the poster they released initially, they actually had to sexually exploit young girls who make this film. Because you have mm -hmm. girls one scene was described by um, a Rod Rayer of the American Conservative is these girls that are actually watching porn on a cell phone and discussing what they're seeing. You've got 10 and 11 year old girls describing these grotesque sex acts. Those little girls are actually describing those sex acts. They are actually memorizing lines about things you wouldn't want your teenage daughters, your 20 year old kids to know about, much less somebody who's 10 or 11. So when you actually have to sexually exploit somebody in order to warn people against sexual exploitation, an obvious line has been crossed. Well, and I think it's damage control. Actually, they're just trying to spin it, right? Mm -hmm. To see, to, to try to, to save face here. You know, you bring up an interesting point here. We get criticized for using abortion victim photography and video to expose abortion. Mm -hmm. But when you see an aborted baby, it doesn't make you want to go do it. <laughs> you know, and exactly. it's, it's not, it's not pornography in that it's not no. eliciting some kind of sexual arousal. When you right. see pornography, it, you know, it affects you totally differently. It doesn't make you, generally speaking, at least unless, I mean, well, let me, when I see it, I'm repulsed by it, of course. But yeah. a lot Which of people are intended. drawn into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always say the difference between abortion victim photography and pornography is that our imagery is intended to turn people off, whereas pornography, right. whatever it does, is intended to turn somebody on. So whenever anybody right. calls our images pornographic, I quite frankly say that's a question between you and your psychiatrist. I can't really I can't really address what's going on there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So over the last generation or so since the sexual revolution, we've just seen this constant sliding down into the pit you know, uh -huh. uh, when it comes to this type of thing. And we have reached a point now, Jonathan. I mean, I, I, as you know, I've been at this for years uh, yeah. in the culture wars, and I've seen things just degrade over time. Uh -huh. I never thought we'd see a day like this, frankly. I, I really didn't. But it's it, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. You right. know, we had sexual revolution, then we had uh, no-fault divorce, promiscuity, fornication, then homosexuality is being legalized. Now LGBTQ. Now we have child pornography basically being mainstreamed, and now we're talking about polyamory and everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I, ha I I hate to think where we're headed. Well, the interesting thing about this discussion is that pornography is actually, I always say pornography is an issue on its own, but it makes every other problem worse. So if you yeah. walk through that list of things that you just laid out, right, pornography yeah. is, 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 in, is contributing to the divorce rate to the extent that over 50% of American divorce court filings explicitly cite pornography as one of the reasons for that divorce. Right, pornography mm -hmm. is, is sexualizing children because the average age of first exposure to porn is now eight, nine, or 10, depending on which American state you're in. Uh, pornography is coarsening morals, leading to promiscuity, changing our view of each other. And so pornography is sort of the untold story behind all of the stories that you just listed because it's exacerbating every existing problem. Exactly. And, you know, I don't know, you know, the statistics better than I did, but I, I read that 80 percent and I, this is astounding. 80 percent of men use pornography. Is that right? 80 percent of men and the number of women used to be vanishingly small. It's up to 53 percent in the last couple of years. Unbelievable. So, folks, I mean, as you're listening to the sound of my voice or watching this on Facebook, uh, uh, you know, eight out of 10 of you, you guys are watching this stuff and uh, you can't sit back and, and, and say, oh, you know, Netflix. No, no, no. You can't do this and jump on board with the canceling of your your uh, your uh, subscription if you are looking at pornography. Jonathan, I want to play this clip. This is uh, this is John MacArthur. John MacArthur uh, addressed this, among other things. Of course, he's in the news because of his stand against uh, Governor Newsom's edicts there in California and trying to keep his church open. Uh, it's interesting. John MacArthur's coming alive lately. He's a, I'm a big fan. Uh, I wasn't years and years ago when he, he threw Operation Render Rescue under the bus, but you know I'll forgive him for that. But he has stepped up. I want I want you to hear this. It's, it's a little bit of a long clip, it's about two minutes long. But uh, I think he has it right, and I, I just want to get your comment. Go ahead and play this clip. He was on Shannon Breen's uh, show the other night on Fox News. 
This is this Netflix movie called Cuties. Now, when I saw the poster a few weeks ago and there was a lot of um, outrage about it, these young girls, what they were going to be doing and dancing and that kind of thing, I've asked our group um, and our team not to show the video because I saw it today and it was actually much worse than I actually thought it was going to be. Uh, I, you know, I don't even know what to say. These are supposed to be 11 year old girls. As a woman, it breaks my heart to see the way that they are being um, essentially sexualized and even used is, here. Um, Pastor, where are we in this cultural moment where there's not a condemnation by other big Netflix names or people as, as associated with that particular service? Well, we're absolutely and exactly where we would expect to be if you had 30 years of trying to destroy morality. If you had 30 years of a sexual revolution, a homosexual revolution, and you thought you were going to be able to stop it at some point and say, well, that's far enough, go no further, that's just not possible. The slide is greased and it's rapidly going downhill at a warp speed. And to try to uh, intervene at some point and say, that's enough, you'd have had to start a long time ago. This is just the next small step in the disintegration of an entire nation that has no conscience. I, I wrote an article for the Daily Wire on um, is America losing its conscience, the vanishing conscience of America. We've lost that. We've lost any sense of the law of God in the heart. It's been overturned by a corrupt view of morality. We've lost the role of the conscience because we've been told to feel no shame. And when you have an, a, a dynamic uh, movement in the culture toward evil at all levels, it just is not possible to stop well, it at some point where you say, that's right, too far. And stop it there. So, John, what, what do you think? John MacArthur, right or wrong? Can it, can it be rolled back? He's 100% right. The interesting thing is, and you'll remember this even better than, than I do, is just after 9-11, you had the New Atheist Movement, you had Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, yeah. Daniel Dennett, all these guys coming out and saying, we need a new age of reason free from the constraints of, of religious dogmas. Well, we're not even 20 years away from that. We don't even know what a girl or a boy is anymore. Uh, that's right. where you that's where you go without God is you can't figure out anything. So I think MacArthur's absolutely right. I think the encouragement I would give to people is the same encouragement that you guys at Created Equal would give, which is that we right. know people can change because we see it every day. People often yeah. ask me, like, you, you write about all this depressing stuff, so why why do you feel like change <laughs> is possible? And I feel like True. change is possible because we see people cancel their abortions all the time. We see people right. change their minds all the time. And so the change, is ha the change is happening on the streets. And the challenge I would put out to all of those who say nothing can be done is things are being done. If you're not one of them, join us, and then you'll have encouragement as well. Agreed, agreed. You know, we may be at a point where we can't return it as a nation and we're mm -hmm. heading towards a judgment, but individually, one by one, heart by heart, we're out on the streets changing hearts and minds every single day. Mm -hmm. And it really does get to a spiritual issue of the, you know, a, a, a spiritual revival, which is necessary. But that starts in the heart of every individual that we preach the gospel to out on the streets of our cities. So I don't want to be Johnny Raincloud here and the big time pe pessimist, but you know, I've seen this happen over two genera uh, you know, two decades now. And uh, like he says, the grease, the, the skids are greased. There's no doubt. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we throw down our, uh, you know, our weapons and we don't fight back. We still need mm -hmm. to for the sake of our kids. Uh, Jonathan, let's move on here. I want to just talk mm -hmm. about generally. Uh, pornography and abortion, where's the connection? Right. Well, so the first connection I noticed is actually a more of a practical than a philosophical connection. It's in, in recruitment at, at in Canada for our internships, for our programs and all that. Uh, I noticed that there was almost a 70, 30 or 80, 20 split uh, girls to guys. We were getting way mm -hmm. more girls signing up than guys consistently. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen that old sign yep. for years, right, about how the vast majority of, of anti-abortion leaders are men, <laughs> etc. You know, I, I wish, uh, no, I, and I wish we had more of them, to be completely honest, right. especially when so uh, the, the streets are increasingly dangerous. We want to have guys out on the street as well, uh, A, to take the hits if somebody does show up, but B, just to be a deterrent to a lot of the cowards who like to show up and scream at the girls on the streets. We had internships right. where we had to explicitly phone up guys and persuade them to join the internship because we had no applications from men that, that year. And, a, hmm. a bunch of, and on, on a bunch of different occasions, there were guys that I knew were, were passionate about the abortion issue. They'd come to a presentation, they, they were convicted about it, 
and they weren't signing up. And finally, I just started calling them. I said, so when did your porn problem start? And mm. every single one wow. of them admitted that they were in fact addicted to porn, that they did have a porn problem. And when they knew they were contributing to the victimization of women uh, in their private life, they, they felt like the hypocrisy of standing up for women in their public life too overwhelming to handle. And so what they decided to do instead was just not step out, not take their role as, as men in the culture, defending the weak and the vulnerable. And pornography has robbed the pro-life movement of, of, of thousands and thousands of men who we desperately need out on the streets. So that was the that was the first thing that we really noticed in a practical sense, uh, and this has been consistent. There was a member of a anti porn organization here in Canada that joked when CCBR was at the same conference as him. He said, "Stick your table next to my table. So if you ask a guy to join the pro life movement, he says no. I'll say, come on over to my table. I can help you with what's standing in the way." Um, wow. And, and so That's we've powerful. seen we've seen that a lot. Philosophically speaking. Uh, essentially what pornography does is it commodifies people as products. It says people right. are not people, people are objects for your consumption. And of course, the abortion worldview, abortion victimizes children, it dehumanizes children and therefore victimizes them. Pornography dehumanizes women and therefore victimizes them because pornography is fundamentally sexual cannibalism. It's the consumption of another human being uh, for your own good. I'll make one final, uh, final point here uh, on, on the porn abortion connection that I know your people out in the streets have also experienced. And you've been on the streets for far longer than I have. So you might have noticed this trend years ago already, as I just noticed in the last uh, six or seven years, that the sorts of things that guys will say to girls now on the street are so much cruder and worse no and more disgusting than even 10 years ago. And I'm only 32. Right. But I've noticed this decline just over my years of doing pro-life activism where they'll throw mm -hmm. the C word. And it wasn't until I read mm -hmm. Gail Dine's book, uh, Pornland, um, how pornography hijacked our sexuality. It wasn't until I started doing that research that I realized that when you've got 80 percent of guys looking at porn, pornography is the backdrop to our culture that nobody talks about, but informs everything. Pornography is sort of like the silent thing happening indoors, but it's shaping our entire reality. So the things that girls on the streets with pro-life signs or having screamed at them, it comes from a guy with a pornified mind who sees somebody and immediately responds as a porn addict would respond, not as a gentleman would respond to a woman that he disagrees with. Those are great points. You're listening to your radio activist here on the Mark Harrington Show. Folks, you can find out more of it by going to markharrington.org. I'm also the president of Created Equal. You can find out more about our work at createdequal.org. Talking here with John Jonathan Van Maren. You can go to his website at thebridgehead.ca. If you like what you're hearing, go to thebridgehead.ca. Also, you can pick up a couple of his books. Uh, he's written a book called The Culture War. He's also written a book on abortion victim photography, which I think is probably the best primer as it regards the use of a victim photography in the public square. And Jonathan, you got a new book out. What, which one was that? That's um, Patriots, the Untold Story of Ireland's Pro-Life right. Movement. Yeah, yeah it's so it's about the, uh, the battle uh, in Ireland. Well, yeah, back to what you had said, that it looks like in some ways the sexual revolution is victorious in conquering uh, all of, all, all of well, the Western world, essentially. And, and looking at stories like Ireland, there's one version of the story says these plucky progressives and feminists finally succeeded in dragging Ireland into the modern world. But the other story is how you know, thousands of men and women put boots on the ground in a country where abortion was already illegal and saved at a minimum estimate, a quarter of a million Irish lives. And I think mm -hmm. that uh, for you and for me and for, for all of us pro-life activists, the stories that we have to tell ourselves are the stories of all those wins God let us have, of how he robbed the culture of death of all these precious lives. Because there's always two ways to tell every historical story. You can look yeah. at the, the the sexual revolution, and then you can look at the resistance, the pushback to the sexual revolution, which you're part of, which I'm part of, and that's the story that I tried to tell those in Ireland who are part of that as well. Well, you brought up a couple of good points there in the last uh, segment there where you're talking about men and pornography, mm -hmm. uh, you know, chivalry being dead, if you will. Uh, what what about the feminist movement? You know, we fe in America right now, you know, we, obviously we have the uh, the presidential election upcoming here right. in November. And it's funny how quiet uh, Kamala Harris got, got when she was picked uh -huh. as a VP as it relates to Joe Biden's improprieties. You know, they look the other way, right? Uh, when it, it, it serves their purposes 
on the abortion issue. They'll cover up for people like Bill Clinton and others. Uh, why aren't feminists who are supposedly for women's rights and for uh, you know against men exploiting them, why do they look the other way when it comes to pornography? And in this case, when it comes to the Netflix movie, Cuties, child pornography. Well, well Kamala Harris, just she, she, she's a shark and she wouldn't recognize a principal that yeah. slapped her across the face. She was the worst That's person true. in the race and, and now she is the worst person in the race. I don't think she yeah. actually has any convictions whatsoever, right? She said right. that Joe Biden was, was a vicious racist and now she's like, Joe <laughs> Biden's my favorite person, right? Uh, she right. said she believe Joe Biden's accuser, and now she believes them both. It's whatever gets her to power. These are the sorts of uh, morally corrupt people that are available to us. The interesting- But a consistent, the interesting, the consistent feminist would be against pornography, right? Yes, yeah, and the original ones were. So like the some right. of the original feminist scholars, like Andrea Dworkin, uh, for example, has written some of the most savage things I've ever read about pornography, and she condemned the left for the hypocrisy you're referring to. And she said, and I quote, the left cannot have its horrors and its politics, too. That is that is what she said. Noam Chomsky came out and said pornography is exploitation. It should be illegal. That's Noam Chomsky. Uh, mm -hmm. So work your way down the list. Most of the, the early consistent feminists recognized that pornography was dehumanizing and degrading. Uh, and then some feminists essentially compromised on porn to get abortion. One of those would be Gloria Steinem, the only one who never dared debate Phyllis Schlafly, who was against pornography originally, but keeps her mouth shut now because, of course, she is a, a massive pusher of abortion. And so if you want to kill your babies, then you're going to have to accept the degradation of women. That's the trade off that these feminists have made. My guest is Jonathan Van Maren. You can go to thebridge.ca to find out more. Uh, he's written a few books. He's a speaker, author, activist in Canada with the Center for Bioethical Reform. That is the Canadian Center for Bioethical Reform. Jonathan, we got a couple of minutes left. Let's wrap it up here. Um, when it comes to the connection between pornography and abortion, obviously we have the exploitation of women when it comes to pornography, the exploitation of children when it comes to abortion. There's a connection there, of course. They're both dehumanizing. Pornography leads to, obviously, the exploitation of women, which can lead to unplanned pregnancies and abortion. Uh -huh. uh, we don't hear a whole lot about this connection, and I'm not sure why. Is it just because pornography is like this taboo subject that we don't want to touch because 80 percent of men are doing it is that well, why yeah yeah no barna group and why, are pro, why are pro-lifers drawing out the uh, connection like you are for me it was honestly i i had questions about where all the men were and that's where i started the research but it, to your Got question it. barna group did research on porn in the church and said 53 percent of pastors had admitted to using porn in the last month so if you want to wow. know why we're not hearing anything about it, there's there's one of the primary crazy. reasons right there. It, it is crazy. And and one of the things that we do and you do at Created Equal is we're constantly trying to figure out how to how to convey the horror of abortion better. And what we found is a young man looking at porn does not make the connection between sex and pregnancy. A young man looking at porn, right. it, it, he can if he can dehumanize the girl he can see, it's so much mm -hmm. easier for him to dehumanize the baby that he can see. So the right. last call that I'll put out to any guy who might be listening and looks at porn, because if there's guys listening, some of you do, the call that I would put out is I had a really profound question put to me at a pro-life conference where they said, well, I've, I've looked at porn for years. Why would you want me? If you face yeah. and fight and defeat your porn addiction, we absolutely want people who know how to fight evil and win. The sorts of people who are willing to fight their own, the demons in their own lives are exactly the people we want shoulder to shoulder with us fighting the demons in the culture. Every guy I know who has looked for a reason to quit porn has managed to quit porn successfully, and many of them are now in the pro-life movement. So if you need a good reason to quit porn today, maybe the babies are that reason. Maybe that's a good enough push for you to say, it's time to kick the stuff out of my life for good. My guest has been Jonathan Van Maren, again, with the Center for Bioethical Reform, the Canadian Center for Bioethical Reform. You can find out more by going to thebridgehead.ca. He's got a couple of books which you should pick up. First of all, The Culture War, uh, Culture Wars, and then uh, a couple others on abortion victim photography. If you have any questions about the use of victim photography in the public square as it relates to pro-life activism, this is the book to read. And he also has a new book out on the battle uh, to protect children in the country of Ireland. 
Uh, Jonathan, I appreciate you being on the program. Keep up the good work up there in Canada, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Really enjoyed it, Mark. Thanks for having me. All right. Jonathan Van Maren, my guest today here on the Mark Harrington Show. Folks, if you want to check out our program, and we have archived radio programs, uh, you can go to our Facebook page and also to our uh, YouTube page. Don't forget, you can go to markharrington.org as well. We'll see you next time. We'll see you Tuesday at 11. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil Evil. plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808. That's 614-269-7808. Or go online to createdequal.net. Createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.